What is up everybody? It's Brandon from Tattooing 101 and everyone that's following this channel knows that I like trying out new things. One thing that I haven't tried out yet that a ton of people have been asking me to is the Bronx. This is a machine that I've seen in the comments quite a few times. Um, it says on the side Hummingbird Rotary and it is the Bronx Wireless Pen. So I'm really excited to try this out. Trying out different brands is really kind of eye-opening, especially like cheaper models of these tattoo machines because it's kind of surprises me sometimes how good they actually do work. So I'm going to go over this machine, what it comes with, and actually tattoo with it. So I'm going to be doing an anime tattoo today and I'll probably be doing some anime tattoos coming up in the future because it's something that really hits home for me. I watch anime all the time and it's just stuff that I like to draw. So that's what we're going to be working on. Let's get into the Bronx Tattoo Machine. So let's check out this machine. Oh yeah, I got a green one. I love this color so much. Um, yeah, so I'm pumped. I thought it was gonna be a black one, but I'm really, really excited I got a green one. Okay, so now that we're checking out this tattoo machine, I'm gonna slap on some gloves real quick. There we go. Just an overview of this machine. You can see here um, the adjustable strokes right here. So you can turn it down to 2.6 it says, up to four, which is really cool. Now this is a click setup. You can hear it right here. You know, some of them are free flowing, free flowing, like the Bishop is. You know, some of them have like the click rip. So this is going to be like a click. Every click is going to change you know, how far the needle goes out and into the cartridge. It also comes with the RCA hookup. So this is a wireless setup. It looks like it unscrews. Yeah, I was kind of worried there for a second. It unscrews like that. So if you don't want to use the wireless setup for it, you're always able to screw this in, use an RCA cord and hook it up to your power supply or in case this battery does in fact die. Let's see if this battery comes with any charge on it, because that would be inconvenient. I will have to charge the battery. Sweet, so it has almost a full battery on it, which is great for this video, so I don't have to pause and charge it all night. So now let's get into turning this machine on. So it's starting out on six volts. Let's turn it up to the highest it goes and see what it actually goes to. That is very loud, but it is running on 12 volts. I'm gonna turn it down, that's kind of scary. So what I would normally run my Bishop wand on is about a 8.5. So that's when I'm gonna start out with this machine. And then we'll go down to do some stipple shading. I'm just gonna turn it down real quick. And it does go down to four volts. It is still running, you can still hear it. So that is good to know. Not all machines will go down that far. So that is cool. So as you can see here, it has a really nice digital display right here. It has your battery, also the voltage you're running on, which is really cool. Now, I believe this is the time. This is where the instructions would come into play. The time that you're actually tattooing, but it's a very simplistic design. You know, all you have to do to change the stroke, do it that way. You can hear it's way louder running it on a 2.6 stroke that it is a four stroke but you can change it. So we're gonna try a couple different strokes for this. I'll probably do my line work at a 3.5 um, and then go up to four for some of it. And then I'll go down to 2.6. I, I wouldn't really never run my machine on a 2.6, but we're just gonna run it to see how it works out on that. And I wanted in this video to be able to show you the setup that I'm using. So this is really important whenever you're tattooing on fake skins because it's going to be different from the tattooing process that I have on actual human skin. I always set up my inks straight black far right. Going to do three drops and one drop. So with this, it goes into the fake skin a whole lot darker than it does on actual human skin. So you want to make sure you're setting up your gray wash specifically for fake skin and not using your setup for actual real skin because it goes into the skin way darker. If you're using like 10 drops or eight drops, they're just gonna be so dark that it's just gonna look like black. So that's how I do my fake skins. So that's a pro tip. Now I'm just gonna fill up the rest of these ink caps with some distilled water. And I'm going to be using a three round liner and a nine round liner, both Cheyenne cartridges. So let's see how it locks into place. 
yeah so when i put the cartridge in it locks in very nicely i'm not having any wiggle at all which is really important the click feels really nice in the hand so i can set my depth that's about where i always have my needles come out right like that so i can let the needle hang out a little bit and still be able to see where my lines are going at all times i'm going to start out running it on eight volts i'm using it on the highest setting which is four for the strokes let's get into our tattoo Having a little bit of spitting right here. So far so good it's running you know just about like other machines do um it is spitting quite a bit um, which normally doesn't happen with my other machine when it comes to like a cheyenne cartridge so that's one thing to look out for if it keeps happening i might try to set the needle back a little bit and see if that resolves the issue you can see right here no spitting that time so maybe it did We'll keep going and see. We'll say it does fit very comfortably in my hand. Um, it's just not weight. It's not too heavy, but it has some weight there to you, you know, so you could feel like you're actually holding a machine. Yeah, I'm really having to slow down my hand speed way slower than I normally would to use this machine. I might try to turn up the voltage and see if that resolves the issue. The motor just might not have as much power as what I normally use. So I'm gonna turn it up to eight volts. So I am hearing a weird clicking noise in the machine, which not sure if that's normal. Obviously this is the first time ever using this machine, but it's not all the time. It'll just like click out of nowhere and it's very weird. It's working well for a nine round liner. I just don't foresee it working well for any bigger groupings because it's having a hard time pushing a nine round liner you know even at nine volts i'm i'm really slowing down my hand speed you know my regular hand speed's like this and i'm having to you know you could see the difference just really slow down how i tattoo it's working well for a nine round liner i just don't foresee it working well for any bigger groupings because it's having a hard time pushing a nine round liner you know even at nine volts i'm i'm really slowing down my hand speed you know my regular hand speed's like this and i'm having to you know you could see the difference just really slow down how i tattoo Okay, I'm gonna pull out a 14 round liner and see what it can do. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and run it at a 9.5. This is higher than I would run. Let's just see what it can do. I have a feeling it's gonna be not as consistent as I'd like it to be though. It's working. You can see here there are some light areas though that you would have to go back over. And one thing I can tell you is that's 100% just in the machine not being able to push a bigger liner because any other machine that I have that I've used would be able to push this cartridge without any issue. Yeah, 
and you can see I'm keeping my hand speed consistent, my depth's correct. But there's just still some, it might be hard to see in the camera, but there's still just some light areas going through. Yeah, you can see, because I'm going so slow with my hand speed just to get the lines in there, that it's just chewing up the fake skin. So that's not what you want to see when you're tattooing. Um, that's just showing that, you know, your hand speed's not matching up to your voltage. So it's pretty much teaching you bad techniques using this and getting it to tattoo effectively. So wouldn't, you know, necessarily try to learn all of these things with this machine. Now I'm switching on to the three round liner. This shouldn't have any issue at all pushing this one. So now I'm gonna turn do it down. Some shading. I'm going to turn my voltage down really have far. It on six so let's start out of I'm just gonna do some six, stipple that. shading. So for stimuli shading, this machine looks like it can do it, you know, which is good to know. Um, you know, it was having issues pushing like the bigger cartridges and stuff, but for something this style, you should have no issue being able to do this. The biggest thing is going to be getting your lines in there. That's going to be the hardest part of using this machine for pretty much any tattoo. Well, you can see that it is a tattoo. You know, I was able to tattoo with this machine and, you know, the outcome is what I would expect to see. Now, would I use this tattoo machine on clients? No, I would not. The reason being the grip, I use fully disposables in my tattoo studio so I could just throw away the cartridges, into a biosafe container and be able to run full disposable without needing an autoclave. So with this machine, I would need an autoclave to be able to use it on clients. Another thing is I don't like fighting with my equipment to be able to tattoo effectively. Um, I had to change the way I tattooed to be able to tattoo this design. I want to be able to pick up my machine and just tattoo how I do naturally. So whatever I am tattooing, Every time I pick up a machine, I don't want to have to change, try to figure out what voltage I need to run on, slow down my hand speed because it's not working correctly. I want to be able to pick up my machine and effectively be able to tattoo with that. That's not the case with this machine. I had to change some things around, try to figure out what works best, what doesn't work at all. You know, I had a lot of trouble with the 14 round liner, even with the nine in some areas. So it was just extra work trying to figure out the best settings for this machine. Now, would it be worth you to try out if you're just working on fake skins and see if you want to get into tattooing? Yes, for the price range, it'd be beneficial to pick one up, try it out, see if you want to possibly get into this industry. But if you're sure and you know you 100% want to tattoo for a living, this would not be the route I would go. Make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know some other stuff you would like me to review on the channel. I love trying out new things. And I love even more being able to help you guys out and better understand a tattoo machine before you actually buy it or any tattoo equipment for that matter. That's it for this review. And with this machine, that's just my feelings on it. Now I'm sure a lot of people out there are tattooing with it, love it, and that's absolutely fine. Everyone has different preferences. Everyone has different likes with their tattoo machines. So if it works for you, that's absolutely great. I'm not knocking it completely. I'm just saying for my tattooing, it's my experience. I would just rather use something different.